Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 13th of July 2020 and the time is just gone 11.45 British summer time. And it's been a fairly positive start to the European trading session. Uh, there was a strong finish uh, in the US on Friday at the back end of last week, a positive move in Asia overnight. Uh, and now we're seeing decent gains here in European stock markets and we're also seeing a nice move to the upside in metals as well uh, so traders are clearly in risk on mode um, in terms of news there hasn't been a colossal amount uh, at the back end of last week we heard from Gilead Sciences um, big pharma company uh, they have an antiviral drug called Remdesivir it's been touted as a while as a potential treatment for COVID-19 on Friday it was confirmed that a study showed that, it, that in, in relation to COVID-19 patients, it can reduce the fatality rate by 62%. That helped stock markets at, at, um, at the back end of last week, and it's still helping stock markets today. Uh, also, at the back end of last week, we heard from BioNTech. They're uh, another pharma, big pharma company. Uh, they're working alongside Pfizer to hopefully can, uh, pr produce a drug that would hopefully go on to be a vaccine for COVID-19. And they're making uh, progress in that, and they hope to have it uh, receive approval by Christmas. Obviously, in relation to, to, to pharmacy and products, it's, it is quite high risk. It's early stages yet, but nonetheless, traders are optimistic. Uh, even though the health crisis is actually, is actually deepening, sadly, um, according to the World Health Organization, uh, with another record uh, day of new cases around the globe. So the situation isn't getting any better, but nonetheless, it seems to me that traders are focused more on the drug story rather than uh, than the actual health crisis itself. Also, if you have you know continuous days of kind of similar news, rising cases and so on and so forth, after a while, sometimes it can, you know, pardon the pun, get immune to that. Um, what's also in the news is that there's a bit of weakness in the oil market. Uh, there is, there's a report during the rounds stating that Saudi Arabia are looking to move, kind of retreat from the record production cuts uh, that have been in place um, in relation to oil production. They're looking at kind of tapering back on those. Uh, and with that, we're seeing a bit of weakness in the oil market, nothing nothing colossal. Uh, but keep in mind, you know, it was only a few weeks ago we, we saw oil at uh, three-month highs. Uh, so what I'll do now, as I always do, is I'll quickly run through the week ahead, um, and then I'll go on to the cover indices, commodity, indices, currencies, and commodities. So the week ahead article can be found on our website, cmcmarkets.com, under insights and news and analysis. So looking ahead to tomorrow, we have trade figures from China. And people are going to be watching both the imports and exports component. Art is China on the import side. Are they buying loads because their economy is recovered? Uh, and are they exporting loads because China is basically the workshop of the world? Are Western economies and economies elsewhere buying stuff from China? Uh, tomorrow morning we also have a GDP reading from the UK. Uh, tomorrow morning we're going to have first half figures from Mercado. They're going to be in focus. The uh, online grocer has done very well uh, in recent months, given the uh, well the pandemic and also people's um, people's wish to order food, order goods online. So it's been a, a double victory uh, for Mercado recently. This week uh, we're going to have a U.S. reporting season. We kick off uh, as of tomorrow. We we'll kick off with the likes of J.P. Morgan and Wells Fargo and Citigroup. We've got big U.S. banks coming out this week. Keep an eye out for provisions in relation to bad loans, bad debts. It's um, we already saw a huge round of it uh, that, that in the last reporting season, and it's highly likely that banks are going to be upping their um, provisions for bad debts. Uh, on Wednesday, we have first quarter figures from Burberry, the, the fashion house. They've traditionally done, done well in, in the Far East, in Hong Kong and China. So keep an eye on those regions for the uh, for that fashion house. Dunelm have Q4 numbers out coming out on Wednesday. Also Wednesday, we have the latest UK unemployment and earnings figures. Uh, China are in focus also, given that they have second quarter GDP. Now this is going to be this is this is really going to be. Um, closely watched by, by traders. We also have other aspects uh, of Chinese data, industrial production and retail sales. And then also on Thursday, we have, these centri we have the ECB's rate decision. Uh, there's no real kind of change expected in relation to the, uh, to, to the rates, uh, but, but, but any kind of commentary about altering um, 
stimulus packages or any kind of guidance that, that, that they might give will be closely watched out for. Uh, on Thursday, we also have a second quarter figures from Netflix. Keep in mind they did quite well in the most recent quarter, given that the lockdowns prompted some people to actually kind of binge watch various different TV shows. So, uh, so, so uh, that's going to be in focus. And lastly, on Friday, uh, we have the kind of beginning of the EU summit. Uh, the European Union is sort of very much divided over how to deal with the uh, with the rescue fund um, there's talk of a 750 billion euro rescue fund for the uh, f for the European Union but within that 500 billion is, is been talked about has been doled out as as grants uh, and the remaining 250 as loans uh, and there are a certain num number of countries uh, dubbed the frugal four including the, the likes of the Netherlands and Austria, uh, who are opposed to having such high levels of grants as opposed to loans being dished out. So keep an eye out for that. So what I'll do now, as I always do, is start off with the big indices, take a look at some currency pairs, and then finally some commodities. So starting off with the FTSE 100, we can see here on the wider view, it's been a nice upward trend for the last number of months. Um, fair enough, it, it, the highs that were achieved in June haven't been retested so far, and we've been trading you could ever so slightly to kind of sideways maybe you could even argue to, to the downside ever so slightly but the wider trend of the past few months is still in play and if you can hold above this line here the 50 day moving average which uh, and that comes into play um and that comes into play in around um i'll just see the uh, precise metric here now the 50 day moving average that comes into play in at 6,121. If you can hold above that, it's likely we could see the, the wider upward trend continue. And if we do press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting the highs of early July in around 6,320, uh, there thereabouts. And if you go beyond that, we could then be looking heading up towards the highest seen in June uh, north of 6,500. Now to the downside, if you do break lower from here, and if you take out if you take out the uh, the most recent lows here, this metric here in the 6,000 kind of you know big psychological num number here. Well, it's actually just the low is just below 6,000. But if you hold it, you know, and at 5,999, if you can if you break below that, that could point us in direction down towards the mid June low in around 6,156. And if you go below that, we can head down towards this zone here, down around 5,800. Take a look now at what's going on over in Germany. It's a fairly similar picture. Uh, the, the, the DAX is in better shape though than the FTSE 100. So similar to the FTSE, it's been a nice upward trend for a number of months. It hasn't retested the highs of early June just yet, but it seems to me that it's getting there. Um, the last few sessions, it's been taking higher. We're currently trading at 12,767. If you press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting the June highs in around 12,930. And if you go beyond that, the big psychological number of 13,000 will be the next one to keep an eye for to the upside. If we do have a pullback, um, we could find some support from this red line here, the eternity moving average in at 12,156. And if you go below that, we could be looking heading back towards this blue line here, the 50-day moving average. It acted nicely as a support on a few occasions in May. So if a metric has been important in the past, it makes it more likely it'll be important in the future, although there are no guarantees. And that comes into play at 11,872. I'll take a look now at what's going on with the Dow Jones. So the Dow Jones, similar to the to the the FTSE and the DAX, decent upward trend into into June, trading ever so slightly sideways, and to be honest, a bit range bound the last number of weeks. Um, but we are holding above the 50 day moving average comfortably, and now we're pretty much trading on the 200 day moving average, this red line here. Uh, and the 200 day moving average is pretty much at this level in around 26,265 there thereabouts. If we can comfortably get above the 200 day moving average and build upon it. We could then be looking at targeting 27,000, and then if you go beyond that, we could be heading up, up towards the highs of June at 20, 27,633. Uh, if we do manage to kind of drift lower again, support could come into play from this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, um, just 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 south of 25,400. We, you know, once again, we can see that metric acted nicely as support in the past, so there's a possibility it could act as support again in the future. 
if you do have a break below the 50 moving average, keep an eye out for this this line here, the 100 moving average in at 24,367. We saw a bit of consolidation and a bit of support from it uh, in early June, late May, and we also saw a bit of consolidation from it in mid June as well. So the metric has seen as a bit of has, has been important in the past, so it could be of interest in the near term. And then lastly, I'll be taking a look at the S&P 500 as far as indices go. Now this trend line has been, well, it, it's not quite perfect. Um, I left it in just because to kind of show you how the, it seems to me that the market's kind of dancing around it. So I draw, if you draw a trend line between the lows of, May, of, uh, of late March to the lows of mid-June, you get this trend line along here. And you can see, you know, quite to be fair, we did you know trade trade below it but you know it was one day we traded below it even close below it but we've been trading kind of quite, quite consistently in around it and we're trading it pretty much on it at the moment and even though cash trading in the US hasn't begun we're expecting the S&P 500 to open higher we're expecting it to open around 3225 so if you can hold above the kind of 3200 mark and also the, this trend line it's likely we could see further gains being made because you know the wider upper trend it's not perfectly intact but it's, a, it's broadly intact so if we do press on higher from here we could be looking at targeting the early june highs in around 3233 uh, if we do pull back though from this these levels we could see support come into play well from this zone here where the red line and the blue line meet the red line being the 20 moving average and the blue line being the 50 moving average as seeing as both metrics have, uh, have have been important in the past you know, we, we've seen them act as um, a support, um, and both of them as support not too long ago. So this zone here could be of interest should we see a move to the downside, and that come into play in around 3,034. I'll take a look now at what's going on with the British pound, well, the euro versus the US dollar. What I do want to talk about is, we just talked about how broadly speaking, stock markets have been reasonably strong over the last few months. Um, one of the things I've noticed is that the US dollar has been acting as, has been popular when traders have been in risk off sentiment. Uh, the greenback has attracted funds during, um, kind of, during, uh, the, the greenback recently has acted as a flight to quality play. So it's no, no coincidence that in the last few sessions, we've seen stock markets kind of edge higher and we could be looking at approaching multi-week highs we're also seeing a stronger euro, and by stronger euro, I mean a weaker dollar. So the dollar, at a decent move, to, sorry, the euro, at a decent move between mid-June, mid-May into mid-June, had a bit of a pullback, a bit of a correction, and it's been edging higher slow, slowly since. And that's largely been down to the fact that traders have been turning their backs on the US dollar because uh, you know stock markets are stronger, metals are higher, they're clearly in a, a mode to take on more risk. So if the euro does build higher from here, uh, we could be looking at heading towards 114, heading up towards the early June highs in at one spot 14.22. And if you go beyond that, we could then be looking at targeting the highs of, of, um, of March in at one spot 14.95. If another support could come, could come into play from the kind of 112 zone down to the lows here in um, in latest June in at one spot 1168 so keep an eye out for one spot 12 one spot 1168 to the downside taking a look now at what's going on in relation to the British pound versus the US dollar so that's so the pounds had a fairly decent run the last couple of weeks uh, the last week or 10 days a nice move to the upside being, being pressing higher we can see here that this candle here has the potential to be a gravestone doji which could kind of could uh, could lead us lower um, but the market itself has been kind of almost trading sideways the last couple of sessions so there's clear kind of indecision going on we can't really ignore the kind of the trend of the last week and a half or so which is is still to the upside so if we do press on higher from here we could be looking at targeting this red line here the trinity moving average in at one spot 69 20, one spot 60 one spot 26 92 and if you go beyond that we could be looking heading towards 130 um sorry i kind of jumped the gun a bit there if you go beyond one spot 26 uh, one spot 26.92. We could be looking at targeting the highs of early June in at one spot 28.13. And if you go beyond that, 
we could be heading up towards 130. Uh, if the market does manage to kind of turn over on itself yet again, we could find support in around the kind of 125 area. If you've seen a bit of consolidation there in the past, or else also from where the this blue line, the 50-day moving average, and this the other line, the 100-day moving average, where they can converge in at one spot 2432. It was only last week we had a decent move in gold. Um, gold, if, if the dollar is soft, which, it ha which, it, which has a track record of being soft recently, when the dollar is soft, it helps the gold market and metals in general. So it's only last week, um, last Wednesday, we saw gold hit its highest level uh, since since September 2011. Uh, so that really just kind of sums up how bullish the gold market is. It hasn't been, been the most exciting of markets in terms of daily market moves, by and large, but by, nonetheless, um, it has been a very decent, we've seen it kind of continue, consistently move higher. So we're clearly in an upward trend. If you can move on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting last week's high in around 1818. Beyond 1818, we could be looking at heading towards 1828. Uh, any move to the downside in, in, um, in gold could find some support from the kind of psychological number of 1800 or if you go below that down towards 1770 this zone here and even if you go below that this area could act as support in at 1747 that would be the low low of late late june june and, and lastly i'll take a look at what's going on with oil looking at Brent crude the september contract so we talked about how we're, today is a bit of a down day for the oil market because there's, there's talk that, that, that Saudi Arabia want to undo some of the you know the record production cuts that have been in place. Um, so they kind of, you can notice here in the oil market, it hasn't really broken out above this this area here, hasn't this this kind of zone here in around forty three dollars and fifty cents, forty three dollars and say ninety ninety five cents. That area hasn't really been hasn't really been um, taken out to the upside, but at the same time, it hasn't really given that much ground to the downside. So it's almost like the market's kind of deciding which way to move next. The steep production cuts and the reopening of economies has has, uh, has led to the, the big rebound in the price of oil. But at the same time, that kind of rally appears to be running out of steam. Um, so if it if it does manage to kind of does manage to pick up again, and we do press on higher from here. We could be looking at targeting the high, so the lows rather of early June, actually early June, early early March, in at forty six dollars and thirty three cents. But if you do drift lower from here, support could come into play back from around forty bucks to forty bucks per barrel, or back down toward this blue line here, the fifty moving average, uh, and that comes into play. The fifty moving average comes into play at thirty eight dollars and seventy seventy three cents. Now that's all for this week. Thank you for listening. Stay safe, have a good training week, and good luck.